of this heat. I'm an asshole, what an asshole, such an asshole, such an asshole. Yo, de yo, yo, de yo, yo, de yo, yo, de yo. All right, young man writes, maybe not so young. Hi, Aaron, hope you're doing well, enjoying the Minnesota summer sun before it leaves again for the next eight months. I go to Vegas. <laughs> the sun doesn't leave. I like, I follow the sun. You recently did a video request for me to candidate cities for Northern Command where you gave me your two cents on several cities in the West that you had spent time in. I currently live in Henderson, Nevada. I'm looking to potentially purchase an additional property. One thing you mentioned in a recent video is that you purchased land to eventually build for your retirement home on. I had not considered this initially, but I've become increasingly interested in this concept over the last couple of months. According to this article that ranks state by lowest property tax, only Colorado, Nevada, Utah, and Montana are of interest in the top 20. Possibly Arizona and New Mexico could be included as well, depending on where you live in the state. <clears throat> According to this article, both Nevada and Colorado are two of the three states to own land to prepare for a zombie apocalypse. Oh, did they do it? They, they say they did a study on that? Okay. Uh, since Nevada and Colorado are on both lists and have lowest property taxes, it's, let's highlight them as I plan to spend most of my time in Colorado and northern Nevada throughout the summer road trip season. Can you do a video request on your experience purchasing land to build a home? Specifically addressing these two questions, what research was done prior to the purchase and what resources were used for this research? All right. <clears throat> the vast majority of my research was traveling. Again, well, hang on. <clears throat> this is why I wrote this book, Reconnaissance Man. It's not. I, all my books are undersellers. They should be all with New York Times best because they've saved hundreds of thousands of dollars. This being one of them, you wouldn't think it. Instead of moving five or six times, and being like a boomer and like, hey, we should move to Florida. What if you just moved to Florida or Arizona or Nevada now? And instead of growing up in these snowbound northern Marxist shitholes, you went to where it's warm and there's no income taxes. I mean, I really, I have no, I should charge a hundred dollars for each freaking book because the rate of return is still there. But it was months, uh, not months, a decade, years. Traveling around. Now, I already had a penchant for the Black Hills because I had already gone there. Uh, me, personally, I love motorcycle riding. I love geology. And the mountains are not so tall. I get altitude sickness. If I go to the Rockies, it's too tall, but I love the Rockies nonetheless. Cascades, same thing. Uh, <clears throat> but, yeah, I, I mean, it, it was driving around saying there is no other place I'd like to be. And then when Baldoni and all, I got the, the fortunate Southern Command where I just house it for winter, which is fine by me. And I've kind of enjoyed learning how to kill and hunt scorpions, though we are friends now. We are respected warriors with one another. Um, yeah, it's, it's just you got to go there and live in these areas for a while. I mean, I had the benefits of couch, uh, couch surfing for at least six to seven years uh, to thoroughly explore these places. So that's, that's what I did. Now, when I was in South Dakota, I was kicking around. Uh, I, wa I knew I wanted to move there years ago, like 10 years ago, I knew, but the opportunity never came up. Um, but I had also gone to the city. I found out what their development, I saw what was being zoned. I looked, you know, where are the utilities being ran? What's going on? I uh, drove around, asked people at bars, what do you think? Oh, this is a good place. You know, find out where the good and bad parts of town are, <laughs> which is kind of fun. There's, there's kind of a bunch of questionable areas in Rapid City, but I mean, there's no real bad part. Um, and that's what, and then you got to get boots on the ground. Dude, I looked at like 12 properties before I finally got one because it would, it would either not have the utilities, it was too far away. Um, <clears throat> the HOAs, my fucking God. Well, we have HOA fee. I don't want HOAs. No, no HOAs. I'm going to build a fucking house. Oh, there's a beautiful piece of property right now. Smack dab downtown, not downtown Rapid City, but right up on the hill beautiful view you get to choose from three houses because the developer at like you need to have this house this house or this house like i don't want an italian villa <laughs> no um so yeah you just get now the other stuff as in this book reconnaissance man um uh, i i go to low state income taxes or no state income taxes i go to where there's not no major metro areas because i don't like traffic uh, I have the luxury because I'm digitally employed. What else? Uh, I, I like to go where it's warm. I'm not, I, if I do it right, I'll never see snow again. <clears throat> and, um, you know, that's, that's what I did. 
But it, it's kind of common. I mean, aside from getting boots on the ground and going all over the place, take a look. You could take a look at like uh, voting patterns. That's another thing. Voter registration. Oh, did that neighborhood hood vote Democratic? Or some, I mean, you kind of avoid these things now living in a major city. You avoid a lot of these things going to a red state. Uh, and then what research was done prior to the purchase? I always look up property taxes. Uh, and then, you know, I found I found my spot. I'm like, this is perfect. This is exactly what I want. Had Gray's Realtor River. Um, and that's where you go. So a lot of it's going to be exploring, exploring, exploring. Then you're going to find an area you really like, and then you got to really explore that area. I've spent over a year in the Black Hills alone through vacations and summers easily. <clears throat> what are your plans to set up utilities such as water, irrigation, electricity, internet? Uh, that's your property will either have utilities ran to it, or you're going to have to create your own. All right, you have to drill a well. Uh, you're going to have to have electricity ran out there somehow and enter it, depending on how far away you are from a main city or a, an internet box, the spine of the internet, as it were. You may not have that. Um, you know, there's there's also some. There's a selling point to that too, being off grid. Uh, one of the contractors, like, he's, he's building his house off grid because he, he wants his own water. He wants his own electricity. He doesn't want like if if the if the the, the collapse occurs <clears throat> and there's every the zombies and all that, he's going to have electricity. Um, so my plans is like I fortunately, the property I built has the utilities and infrastructure already ran out there. But I'm going to have a redundancy. I'm going to have a backup plan. There will be solar panels. There will be a generator. Um a hand pump, you know, for water, that kind of thing. <clears throat> Wood burning stove. What have you learned since you purchased the property that you would have done differently had you known more if there is anything? Um, nothing wrong. The property purchased is, I, I got real lucky. I mean, this is like the Clary property. I don't know if everybody would like it, but I love it. This is my property. It's, it's just this perfect piece of property that suits my desires and needs. Um, it's building. The further away you get, keep in mind with cities, you have a lot of contractors, a lot of builders, a lot of specialists. Um, you got a lot of financing. And uh, that means there's ample supply. Things could get done. If the electrician is sick, they could find another electrician. But another thing with major metropolitan areas is you have developers who have models. And you, you have a development. It says, okay, you could choose this model, this model, this model. And because all those contractors and builders are used to bang, building the same house, they bang it out like on an assembly line. And it actually it drops the price of, uh, of the housing down because I've seen it. They'll, the in comes the digging equipment. They dig out six plots of land for basements. Then comes the concrete guys. They come in the next day and they pour the concrete. Then in comes in the the flooring and the framing guys, and they all bang out those six houses. And it's an assembly line, which results in very high quality because it's almost standardized. Well, it is standardized, uh, <clears throat> and they can bang them out so quickly. So there's a lot less time cost there. If you're going out to more remote areas, they just don't have the number of builders out there. They don't have the number of tradesmen out there uh, to do that work. So it's going to, whereas in the Twin Cities, you can have a very fine house, a very big, fine house built to specification, not a custom home, built to specification in uh, three months. In uh, the, the, the rural parts, holy shit, it's been nine. <laughs> we haven't even started digging yet. It, because I had to fire the two other builders because, it, and here's where you're going to run into one of the drawbacks of going out to rural parts of, of red states is you're going to run into who dang diggly do dang diggly do's. Like the, the first builder I had was giving me a quote on a house and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm going to the banker. This is how much he says we could build it. Oh, okay, well, we could finance you for that. I'm like, okay, good, good. Is there a septic tank in there? All right. And then he says, oh, well, well that was just labor. Like I drove out to, to South Dakota and I'm sitting at the, the material place. And then all of a sudden they, they hand me a bill for 180,000. I'm like, what, what's this? Well, those are materials. I'm like, you mean you've just been quoting me labor this entire time. And I've been going to the banker, $186,000 shy. Fired. <clears throat> the other fuck wits took four, four weeks to get me a, 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 they never got me the list. I have to be honest, four weeks for them to get me a list. Cause you know, maybe the banker wants to know how, what's going into the house. Or the material costs. And I'm like, do you have coronavirus? No. All right, you're fired too. Uh, so you really gotta 
you really got to go and fight. Now, if you bought in advance of building, years in advance, you can go ahead and find out. Like if you're not in a rush to be there, you can you can suss around, have your realtor maybe you know, keep an eye out. I would probably go with the bankers choosing a builder before I go with a realtor. Um, the bankers are a little bit because they're the ones that advance the money and they know which builders like, oh, yeah, they show up on time and they get it done. No, they didn't embezzle the funds, which is common. That happens. <clears throat> should say it's common, but it does happen. Um, so that's, that's more the building stage, but if you're not going to move out there for five years, you got all the time in the world and then your builder can, you know, you could even, you could even piecemeal it. Like, well, I don't know if you'd want to do that, but like you save up the money. All right, put in the foundation on a roof on top of it and some siding and we'll worry about the interior later. Like you could piecemeal it. So you don't actually take out a mortgage. <clears throat> Anything else to consider when exploring this, this type of purchase? Um, yeah, there's, there's not much more than that. You got to go travel around. You got to get boots on the ground. Uh, make sure it's not in a school district where, you know, nothing's too good for the kids. Fuck that shit. You could, you could kind of pull that off in Florida because the old people are like, what kids? Fuck off. We're retired. Um, But, you know. And you what you also have to do, you got to figure out, do you want to live way off the grid? Because then you have to have your own well. Uh, you're going to have to like have water shut off valves if it's up in a wintry area. Uh, <clears throat> if you're off, you're, you're not in a development or anything like that, you can build a small little cabin, just a small little cabin. I may even do that myself, just this small little cabin with a toilet. My buddy khan has got this great little mother-in-law apartment kind of house. It's a, basically a studio apartment unto itself. And there's this great little, I'm like, dude, I could totally live there. <clears throat> no garage, but... Um, you don't need one in Arizona. And that's about it. All right, let's take a look at the super chats. If any, oh, yeah, here we go. Fernando, uh, five bucks. If the client changes the art, okay, we're going back to If the client changes the art, the designer can lose reputation. Oh, I see. So the laws protect the artist depending on the contract. I'm at uniofortis.com. All right, so hopefully our buddy, uh, the other guy, uh, wants to look up uniofortis.com. Uh, ice snows for two bucks. Do you recommend lunar panels on top of solar? One? Is that a thing? I don't know. Are this uh, probably no? I don't think you're. Look, already solar panels aren't cost beneficial. You need like government subsidy to make it. it, it I'm say I've even thought about depending where you are getting a a windmill, uh, especially in Wyoming. Uh, but it's uh, you're you're not buying it because you're going to save money. You're buying it so if the electricity goes down. Uh, because we had one too many uh, uh, Karens in HR promoted to the engineering department, even though she wasn't an engineer. But we made everyone's feelings feel better. And then the electric grid went down. <clears throat> uh, I kind of want to not be reliant on anything. Uh, I want to be reliant on things as little as possible. Atha for two bucks. Looking forward to you visiting at your new house in 2031. Right there, Atham. Right there. <laughs> Hey, we'll have your graduation party at my house. We'll combine it. We'll save money. We'll have your graduation party and my homewarming or house opening party, whatever they call it. We'll have it in 2031. All right. You're just going to have to study a little bit faster because I'm not going to wait for you for 2037. <laughs> oh, David Th uh, Frost for five bucks. Is buying real estate with in income the easiest way to have cash flow? My goal is to become a full time real estate investor at a young age. David. <clears throat> The easiest way to make money is to become an engineer or a doctor or something that pays a lot per hour, and then you go buy real estate for cash, okay? Don't do it, bro, me. Don't do it. I'm going to get in the flipping house. No. You need to real look, the market's too efficient. And with all this money flooding the market and super low artificial low interest rates, prices are so high that your costs in terms of mortgage and property maintenance and interest and insurance and all that, your rents aren't going to cover it. I don't know where in the United States rents cover your mortgage and total cost of house. I don't know where. I just don't. Me, I got to where I am living in a basement. All right, and then living in another basement and buying rental property, and it sucked because I had to live somewhere. All right, and I ended up having uh, several uh, 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 what do they call them tenants 
heavily subsidized my living expense. Shoot, I knew, I almost wasn't going to live. I know I couldn't have lived in the Twin Cities without having some subsidy. Uh, for that. But unlike Democrats and everyone in Minneapolis asking for the taxpayer to subsidize them, I just you know lived in a basement. <clears throat> I guess I'm foolish. I should just be saying, I'm entitled to other people's shit because I'm from Minneapolis. All right. So, yes, if you have a lot of money and then you buy a place for cash and you're not dicking around with a mortgage, yes, you can make money on real estate. But honestly, it's a lot easier unless you got to unless you're going to live there because you need a place to live. Unless you're going to live there, it's a lot less headache and management to just throw your money into the S&P 500 index, which could go down, by the way. Yeah, it could go down, by the way. You could lose all your money. <clears throat> Don't know if you knew this about any investment. You could lose all of your money at all times. Just like that. Uh, David Frost for two bucks. I meant I would buy property mortgage free. Yeah. Yes. That, that's not bad because you're not dicking around with fine and you just get the cash flow right off there. And it depends. I mean, you got to look at your schedule E too. What's the maintenance cost? What's the property? You know, should you Airbnb it? Should you rent it out long term? Uh, but I would, I would, instead of rental property to people, I'd start looking at storage because people fucking suck. And I don't know if you know, it's this place called Minneapolis. It's a Marxist left a shithole. Before all this, the city council like was up, you know, like, oh, you can't reject section eight. You have to take section eight applications. Oh, we're not allowing single family homes being built anymore. Everything has to be affordable housing. They're slowly just taking over. You, you fuck renting to people, dude. Fuck that shit. Store shit. People need people buy more shit than they have room to store it at their house, and then you just, and then like if the thing burns down, you got insurance. It's like oh, I'm sorry, all your worthless crap you bought uh, is burnt. Here's your payout. There you go. Ice knows for five bucks. If anyone ever asks you for a good bid, Nas idea, show them some old early 1990s Tom Vu infomercials. That's classic. Know what I'm talking about? I know who Tom Vu is, but um, Vince. Slap chop guy and the sham wow guy, he's back. It's the sham wow face mask because it's like it's it does everything. Zucchini, flirtini, rarini, bikini, bam, slap chop. So he's back. <laughs> I'll have to look at Tom Vu. Uh, all right, that's it. Uh, questions, answers, assholeconsulting.com. And remember, don't be po, don't be a millennial. July is Don't Become a Millennial Month. So get your book, How Not to Become a Millennial, available. Paperback, Kindle, and audiobook. Get it for a millennial you're trying to help save or a Gen Zer you hope doesn't make the same mistakes millennials did. Or you just want to hear a great book that just utterly rags and rips apart boomers and millennials. There you go. We'll see you guys later. Toodles.